I say in my uh, uh, statement, and given those latter two groups' positions on Trinity, right, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right, we already know that um, they neither group has a Trinity model that's acceptable by um, Orthodox with a small O Christian standards. Um, both of them have some some oddly described. Um, views on the the nature of God, the ontology of God, the makeup of God. So we're either talking about an outright rejection of Trinity or a kind of a warped view of of God and His persons. Um, so given that reality, then they just that my my unsuspecting Protestant Christian example here, he must he just might find himself or themselves in a worse off place than they began with when they left their mainstream Protestant evangelical trinity believing church way they right so that's one of the reasons why i had this discussion is to kind of make us aware of these particular realities let's turn now to section number five which is entitled who or what is the holy spirit rabbinic jewish thoughts from the jewish encyclopedia these are my own comments let's start out uh here i say this particular section of my Holy Spirit commentary will be quite short since mainstream Jewish views on this topic itself are quite succinct and to the point in my uh, understanding. I continue. Rabbinic Judaism, which is the branch that identifies itself over and against Messianic Judaism and Evangelical Christianity, right? So um, they are definitely the, the other position. Uh, they take what I like to identify as a, quote, foundational, end quote, aspect on this question of who or what is the Holy Spirit. Now, I say a foundational in both a positive and a negative way. It's positive in the sense that you always want to go back to the foundational aspects of Scripture and start there whenever you're studying any particular topic, right? You want to know what the Bible says first, and you want to start with the earliest sources if you can. Start from the earliest parts of the Bible and work your way towards the later parts. That's what I mean by foundational in a positive way. However, there's a negative way to spin this as well. If you're only focus on foundational and you don't move past foundation and allow your theology to build on itself in the progressive nature of the Bible, the way the Bible progressively reveals revelation to us as time progressed, as um, uh, details emerged, as God revealed himself more and more to his people in this progressive fashion, if you don't allow your theology to uh, build on itself, you know, starting with a foundation and then build on top of that, well, then your theology is going to end up being short-sighted. It's going to be um, stunted in its growth. It's not going to move beyond foundational. And so that's a negative aspect of foundation. And that's precisely what rabbinic Judaism has done. They take the foundational parts of our Bible, right, the Torah and the writings and the prophets, the Tanakh, right, um, the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, which is what the acronym Tanakh stands for, the TNK, and they take that and they stop. They don't allow their theology to include the later apostolic writings, the continued revelation of God to his people through the person and work of Yeshua and the Holy Spirit following the book of Acts and, and, and later and Paul's writings. They reject all of that later revelation and they only retain the foundational, quote-unquote, parts of the Bible. Now, of course, in reality, we know they build on top of that with their extra-biblical um, rabbinical um, uh, traditions, Talmudic, uh, Midrashic, um, you know, um, esoteric, uh, and all that other nonsense gets built on top of the foundations to the point that you don't even know what the foundation looks like anymore. It's all muddied and clouded by their own man's uh, opinions and all that other stuff. And if you've ever read any rabbinic writings, you know it's very unfortunate that you can hardly even get to the real truth of what the Bible says anymore because it's there's so much rabbi said in the name of rabbi who said in the name of rabbi who quoted in the name of rabbi right and you're thinking well what really did the bible say and oftentimes you can't tell what the bible said anymore because rabbi so-and-so in the name of rabbi so-and-so etc 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 right so it's all the traditions that have clouded the truth so it's even unfortunate that foundation is they stop at that they've committed 
two errors. Not only do they not allow foundation to be built upon with later revelation, but rabbinic Judaism also piles on heaps on um, uh, copious amounts of tradition on tradition on tradition on fences on fences on fences on tradition on tradition on fences on interpretation on you know you guys get the idea all right so um so that's the approach that they take when it comes to um holy spirit so um i actually say in my commentary i say foundational because much of their articulated interpretations that we're going to be reading about are rooted in the very scriptures that orthodox with a small o trinitarian christians hold to be infallible as well right we're both using the same initial foundational resources when it comes to um bible